and welcome to the For Parents Like You podcast. My name is Hilda Joy O'Connor and on this podcast we will be talking about all things to do with parenting. Being a parent is one of the most important roles you can ever play in the life of another human being. Let's be honest, there is nothing more fulfilling than to see our children grow up in love, compassion and empowerment. But the process of getting them to this stage can be very difficult. On this podcast, we will be discussing ways of how to equip parents like you and me to become more effective and purpose-driven. Thank you so much for joining me as we dive into today's episode. Welcome everyone. We have a special guest with us today, Lola Adebayo. Yes, yes. I'm the author of She's My Twin Sister and the new book coming out next month, um, That's My New Friend. Is also is my, is my second book that's going to be out, but yes. So what inspired you to write your first book, She's My Twin Sister? Well, um, I, I'm a mum of twins and um, a single mum of twins. And when I had the girls, I was, you know, I always feel like it's good to read to your children from a really young age. Um, it just helps stimulate their brain and like their creativity. And you know, before being a mum, I would look at books, but it was more so, you know, books for myself or um, for older children. But then when I started looking at children's books and I started noticing a pattern, I'm thinking, OK, a lot of these children, children's books, they don't tend to look like us. You don't see a lot of black children. You know, it, it doesn't tell a lot of the, 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 the black child stories. Um, and I was just thinking, wow, like, how do I... It's great reading these books to my, for my, to my babies, but I'd love for them to see a reflection of themselves on the pages. So then I just started writing small stories. Um, you know, I was on maternity leave in my downtime, just writing just little short stories about how I expected their life to, like how they expected to grow, um, how they experienced certain things as twins. And then it just hit me like, why don't I just, self-publish and turn some of these stories into books and initially it was just like okay that's a crazy idea you know when you you tell yourself this like outlandish idea and it's like yeah I'm gonna do that then it's like hold on a minute that's a bit that's nuts can you can I do that (laughs) and I was thinking can I so I just started researching on like self-publishing I knew straight away that I wanted to self-publish because I wanted to have complete control of everything the story, the visuals. I'm an art director by profession, so I work in marketing. So I'm very big on like create like visual creativity and 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 selling, telling a story through visuals. So I really wanted to have complete control. So I started researching on um, how to self-publish. And there's a lot of information out there. Like YouTube was my best friend. I'm not gonna lie. Like <laughs> all yes. I typed into the search yeah honestly like if not for YouTube, oh gosh. All I typed in the search was how do I self-publish a children's book? And so much stuff came up. And you know, there were, I got to see like there was a lot of platforms that you could use um in order to self-publish. So I was just like I went into like a rabbit hole of just research. It was insane. Like I was like a mad woman. Uh, and then as you know things got to progress I found the platform that was right for me and then the next step was because the books were already written the next step was getting an illustrator and and, and just that whole process so yeah so the main reason why I wanted to write these books was because I wanted to kind of just fill a market where we have books that are about young black children and it may not necessarily always be about the black experience. It could literally be like a fantasy book. Um, Cause I know there's a lot of black books out there that are about, you know, hair, empowering ourselves about race. And that's great too. But I also wanted to, you know, bring out books that were just about relationship dynamics and how children can socially interact with, you know, their family members, their siblings, their friends at school and just things like that. And that was like my main, that was the niche that I was trying to get into. So yeah, that's the main reason why I wanted to um, write these books and 
I'm glad I did it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's such a fantastic idea. And I was so encouraged to see your book on Instagram because that's how I found you. I was like, oh, wow, she's amazing. She's doing this. <laughs> And because I'm a twin as well, so I yeah. was able to identify myself um, with the characters that were shown. Um, oh, wow. Um, yeah, I'm a twin. Oh, <laughs> amazing. Talking about twins, how is the relationship with your twins like? Yes, yeah, so my twins, they, they love each other. I'll say that first. <laughs> and they are... I would say they're the best of friends. Like they do get on quite well. Um, they're so different. And you know, you, 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 you read that in the first book, they're so different. One is very laid back. Um, you know, she's quite calm. You know, she, she's very good at independent play. She gets on with things, she's very focused. Um, and then the other twin is like the polar opposite. She is extroverted. She's loud, really loud. <laughs> She's really, really bubbly. She likes to be the center of attention. And the two of them together, the dynamic just works so perfectly because, you know, you know, Amira, which is the loud twin, she, she allows Amal to come out of her shell a lot more. And, and whereas Amel, she tones a mirror down so when the mirror's like getting ahead of herself she kind of reels her back in like okay you know so it just works and yeah they do fight I'm not gonna lie they they often bicker often and it's always about you know I want that and they're always fighting over something and even if they have when they're much younger it was funny because you would give them the same thing they'll both have the same doll but for some reason they will fight over that one doll and <laughs> And I'll be like, but it's exactly the same. But to them, they'll just have to fight over that one doll. You know, there's, there's two. So, yeah, so they're, they're very different in that. And, you know, in school, they had their own set of friends, but they also have mutual um, friends together. Because, you know, because they're twins in um, a lot of the British schools, they separate the twins and put them in separate classes just so that they can encourage individual individuality um, because usually when twins are together, they're always constantly groups. Like, you know, you hear it a lot of the time, oh, the twins over there and the twins. And and they do get that. So at school, it's different because they're not in the same class. It's Amel and Amira. Amel's here and Amira's there. So, yeah. But they have the, I think they've got the best little relationship. They'll fight. And if anyone wants to come in and infiltrate and try and start a fight with one twin, they'll join forces. <laughs> Even though they know their sister's wrong, but they, you know, Outside, it's like, no, I'm going to take my sister's side. But indoors, I'm going to tell my sister off about, you know. <laughs> and that's just basically their relationship. It's, like, it's one's coming yeah. out. Of it. It's so cute. Yeah. I relate to that because I remember <laughs> uh, growing up with my sister, we always fighting. Um, but even now, um, you know, trying to work on our relationship, I find, that, you know, we're actually more alike than we think. Um, yeah but I love the fact that you said that they that in the beginning that they're close and the only reason why they can be that close is because you cultivate that dynamic of love and dynamic of unity so can you tell us what the book is about yes um so she's my twin sister is based on two characters and they're twins obviously she's my twin sister and it's just an introduction to Amel and Amira the twins which are the characters that are throughout this book series and the actual book itself is just about how although they're twins they are actually quite different in their personalities in how they do things and then it shows how they interact with each other and how they're Sib even though they're siblings they can still be like the best of friends they like to do things together um and it's not always you know rainbows and sunshine they fight as well so it's just to show the whole dynamic of having a sibling and having that relationship with your sibling being best friends or not great friends and just how to navigate when there's a disagreement between you know you and your sibling and in this case twin um and yeah it's just basically just follows on their journey the first book in, I wanted the first book to be more or less an introduction of who they are okay. and their personalities and what they like and and I wanted people to kind of take away you know how kids do 
understand social dynamics and, mm. and, and interaction and you know relationship behaviors and stuff like that and it was just that and it's it's quite subtle that that whole um learning you don't you don't notice it at first but as you go through the book it's like oh okay like you know, and you know, you can relate whether you're a twin or not. If you've got siblings, you can easily relate to the story. Um, so yeah, that's the first book. Uh, that's incredible. Basically, yeah, yeah. So when when you were writing this book, what did you learn in the process, or what surprised you the most? Um, I would say the book is a labor of love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, oh, I can hear you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mira's here. Hi. The loud twin. <laughs> Hello, oh, Mira. <laughs> I would say the book is, I mean, writing was the labor of, as I said, I, I did a lot of research prior. And, um, you know, with, with the extensive research that I did, it didn't actually prepare me for the process of it all. And to be honest, the writing was the easiest part. Like, I, I didn't think you know actually write like I've written most of the books in the series and the actual writing aspect was the easy part and then what I found quite challenging was finding an illustrator that fit my vision and you know communicating with that illustrator because you know creatives are quite carefree I think that's the word I should say most creatives most issues are quite carefree um, although some do understand deadlines, they, you know, anything can happen within time. And I learned basically from myself that don't, <laughs> if you don't meet a deadline, don't beat yourself up about it because it happens. And, you know, sometimes the illustrator may not get the artwork in on time or, you know, or there's a glitch in, in, in the formatting because I did all the formatting of the book myself, which is basically when you put the imagery and the text together and create the cover and all that kind of stuff so I was fortunate that I was you know because of the field that I work in I was able to do that for myself so that was less of a headache which it was less of a headache finding someone to do it but more of a headache having to do it for myself and and having bumps in the road where you know certain formatting of the book wasn't being um accepted by the platform and it was just a lot of trial and error with mm. the first book and, and you know reading up on things like royalties because I self-published <gasps> under KDP which is Kindle Direct Publishing it's owned by Amazon and um, with them when you format the book you put it through a system and it has to go through extensive reviews oh, wow. and if the actual formatting isn't right then they reject the book and you have to start all over again so is th those kind of things are quite stressful wow <laughs> yeah so I mean the process of actually getting it just having it there physical um even just a digital copy of it just having it all there was a long process but it was a learning curve like I learned so much I learned how to deal with other people I mean I already knew that in my job like having to deal with illustrators and things like that but just for my own personal like I I, I learned so much marketing was another thing that I'm still struggling with. I'm not gonna lie, and I work in digital marketing because so it makes no sense. How, <laughs> but it's just different having to like market yourself and market your own product. Yeah. It's a whole new thing, yeah. and even the, the target audience, like you know, your my target audience is our children. Like, how do I speak? To, I know how to speak to adults. I know how to sell to adults I know how to you know sell an idea sell creative to adults but how do I do that to children mm -hmm. <laughs> how do I make it you know what I mean like it was really one of the things that I'm honestly still learning even now like I'm still um trying to understand like how to get myself out there how to get the book out there as okay. a self-publisher you, you know when you don't have a backing of a major publishing company you it's kind of difficult to have to basically it's just DIY just getting having to sell yourself market yourself um you know talk to distributors because obviously getting my books in like stockists and um yeah. libraries and I've been fortunate enough so there's a community of black authors and okay. you know they, they are so so helpful it is actually a beautiful thing I'm not gonna lie like you know I've had so much support from uh 
you know, a handful of black authors wow. in the UK. Yeah, honestly, like they've reached out to me. They, when my first book came out, they're like, oh my gosh, this book looks amazing. They've promoted, they've, um, you know, they have asked me to join events with them. Like they've sent me their contacts. It's such an amazing little community. of. I shouldn't even That's say little amazing. because it's just getting bigger and bigger. But yeah. like, yeah, but without the help of them, I wouldn't even know where to go from here. So I, I was, I want to like, you know, pay that forward. Yeah, so, that's good. The strength and yeah, community. Stre- exactly. Mm. Like a friend of mine is going to release a book soon. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, encourage her and let her know that, yeah, there's a community of us that we're all trying to help each other. Because at the end of the day, there's no competition. That's right. Uh, yeah, kids <laughs> kids can read like millions of books. Do you know what That's I mean? Right. Like there's an, it's not like I'll, you know, I'm, I can't promote your book because then I can't sell my it's it's not like any other product that you can mm-hmm. kids can have a lot of books. That's a right. lot of different types of books. So to be able to help another author um, you know, get ahead or, you know, give them certain contacts, it's 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 so it's rewarding and it's so mm-hmm. it's such a nice like this it's amazing so I would say that's been like the complete positive this whole journey um wow, but yeah amazing. the process is it's, a, it's, a, it's extensive but yeah. as I said it's a labor of love you do that's it for right. the love you do it for the passion you do it because you know my, I keep reminding myself of the of the objective and my objective was I wanted to write books that are a reflection of my children that are a reflection of all you know all the other black children out there that tell the black experience that tell black stories and that show black faces and th- that was my objective and you know if I can get my book out there if one if we can get into one household I'm happy if we yeah. get into millions of households I'm happy it's not even about the money either I'm not trying to make money from this it's just getting it out there and having bigger publishers see that we can actually create books and sell books That's for right. us look like us on the front pages like don't be scared to sign a black author telling stories about black children you know predominantly black children because we can sell we can sell those type of books you know but yeah how were you able to balance it in in terms of like looking after your children as well as writing a new book how were you able to balance both (laughs) that's a really good question um I did a lot of late nights, <laughs> you know, there was a lot of late nights, there was a lot of work during my lunch break and things like that. Um, the beauty of this book is the girls actually helped me write some of it. Yeah, there's some random things in the book where it's just like, hold on, that's that's a random thought. But then just know that that randomness is the girls. It's not, it's not me, but like, yeah. So I tried to get them involved as much as I could with the first book. And even with the second book, I tried to get them really, really involved. So that helped. But it's with anything. As a parent, you just kind of learn to juggle, you know, being a parent and work or being a parent and looking after the household. I feel like it's it's our superpower. I don't know how else to explain it. It's God. (laughs) I don't know how else to explain it. You just kind of do. You know what I mean? You kind of do it like... I was, you know, I've been fortunate. I have, I have a great support system mm-hmm. where, you know, if it does get a bit much, then, you know, either my mum will have them or, you know, they've got five godmothers. They, I, they, wow, that's the largest I've yes, heard. Yes. As soon as I, do you know what, it, do you know what it is? As soon as that ultrasound told me I was having twins, I said, hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, what, what, what are we going to, how are we going to do this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> me and their dad was like okay and now and, and you know I've got such a great circle of friends and it was just I had to like I, they were all, and the thing is all five of their godmothers have such amazing relationship with them from a, from baby so it was fitting people judge me they're like five and I'm like yeah and the, all five are active and all five they take the girls out like obviously not together but you know they have their own relationships with them and yeah so when things get a bit too much I know I have them and the girls go off to their godmothers or they go off to my mum or they go off to their dad or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm able to have that breathing in order to get work done. So yeah, we just do it. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And how how are you able to maintain your mental well-being whilst looking after twins? Yeah. Oh gosh. It's it's that's one of the things that if I'm completely honest, I've I've struggled with because 
you know, being a, being a single mum is hard, but being a single mum with twins is a battle that, you know, you, mentally you can never, ever really prepare for. So I, I have honestly struggled to keep myself, I don't want to say sane, but, you know, keep myself together because yeah. it's stressful. I work a full-time job and my job is very, very demanding. Mm. Um, and then, you know, and then it's just me and them. So it's like, especially, and, and even with this lockdown and everything else, like it's been me, my job, them, homeschool. Wow. And that's like been my life. And it's, it gets, it can get to a time where it's just so stressful and it's just so much. But as I said, I've got such a great support system that if it does get too much for me, then they, I have them to lean on, you know, like I have my family, to lean on, I have my friends, their godmothers to lean on. Like it's, it, if not for them, I would have easily just crumbled. 100 percent and that's just as me being honest because it's not easy I'm not gonna paint it out like yeah I'm gonna do everything I do everything I'm you know I'm a super mom and even when people say that I, I, I don't get believe it. in that term super yeah, mom yeah <laughs> super mom like, no we do what we have to do I don't want to be super <laughs> I want to sleep <laughs> it's true <laughs> I don't want to lay in my bed all day and just watch Netflix like you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be super mum, but thank you. Like, it, but we have, it's one of the things that naturally we just adapt to certain things. And we just, I mean, I'd say, that the, the, as I said, the best thing that I did for my mental health was make sure that my support system was strong and that they were always there for me, which they were. And I thank God for them all the time. And also just make sure I had time for myself. And not necessarily like, as in, not having the children around but just doing things that are for me so you know like this book I wanted to do it I did that for me like even though it was for the girls of course but like it was a goal of mine that I wanted mm-hmm. to achieve and you know just the small things that you know if I want to have like a, a a late you know late snack I'm doing that for me like anything that that I knew was for me and not for them because my whole day would be the girls the girls the girls Mm -hmm. I need to get this for the girls I need to do this for the girls you know what I mean like it's I need to feel like like everything was the girls the girls the girls and it took a while to be honest for me to get to the point where it's like okay Lola what about you what that's what right what do? about you yeah. yeah what about you like what 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 are your needs because your your children are they're good they've always got you you've got them. like right. they're always good but what about you what like, about are you, you good yeah so for me it was important to, to to always remember like am I good and one thing I did last year is I went on um three um, I went on two solar holidays without the children yeah I wow. took myself on How holiday was that? My oh my goodness <laughs> Oh, it was lovely. It was lovely. I enjoyed well, well. Like I had, oh. it was, and the, the mummy guilt tried to get me, but I said, no, oh, no, you will not get me this day. You will not, you will not take a hold of me. That mummy guilt will not hold me because I That's deserve good. it. <laughs> you know, you say, I, just, I deserve this one. That's so, yeah, right. like, I wanted to do something for myself. And this is one of the things that, you know, it was important for me. Like, okay, solo holidays is about the kids. It's, that That's was a good. big thing and yeah so that for that for me for that doing stuff for myself was in order to that helped me get me in you know a good place mentally just just reminding myself that I'm here mm. and you know I'm present and I need to love on myself the way I love on my children mm. and not forget who I am and who I was before them and that's that's the thing. As parents, we forget who we were before being parents. Yes, we lose that person. You know, honestly, we lose yeah. that person. And it's yeah. like I've I've yeah. been there. I remember. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that I've been recently doing is that I would take magazines from um, ASDA or any super, supermarket store, <laughs> yeah. and I would just literally cut out motivation um, words and oh, stick wow. it on a paper and just put it up on my wall um, to encourage myself because I struggled a lot with anxiety. Um, Mm -hmm. I lacked a lot of self-confidence. And so anytime at the past, my husband would encourage encourage me. I never felt it because 
I felt that I was not capable to be loved or to be accepted or to mm. be positively thought of. And so mm. again, um, I needed to work on my own mental well-being. And so one of the practical things that I try to do even now and with my little children, I get them to cut out pictures, cut out motivating words and just stick it on as a way to remind ourselves that actually we are loved. We are valuable. Yeah. We are yeah. radiant. We are, we are the spotlight. <laughs> What do you do as a mother to encourage yourself as well as encourage your children? I mean, like, as I said, my, my children need to see, for me to encourage them, they need to see it in me. So, you know, they need to see that I am confident that I, you know, I know how to express myself if I'm feeling a, a certain way. And for them to learn from seeing me, that's that's my main thing. I do te- I do try and you know, sit them down and and you know I'll give an example. So a mirror wears glasses, and they got to a point where she just hated wearing them. Like she was quite, she was always been quite good at wearing her glasses, and then she just got into a stage where she just hated wearing them, and she'll do little things like hide them, you know, try and break them, pretend. And I'm just like. Amira, why? Why do you not wear? And I sat her down and I was like, what's going on? Like, why do you not want to wear your glasses? And she said to me, oh, I, uh, it's because I look ugly. And I was just like, what? She goes, I said, and I instantly thought someone was telling us. I was like, who told, who told you you look ugly? Like, who said that? Like, she goes, no, because it's just school. You know, I said, did someone say to you at school that you look ugly? And I was just, so, like, she couldn't really, you know, fully express it but she was basically just telling me that wearing her glasses made her look ugly so I'm just like Amira no you're beautiful you're beautiful you don't understand that your glasses make you look so cute she loves to hear the word cute she loves to hear that she's cute so I'm just like your glasses make you look so cute and they make you look so smart like you're so you you wear glasses because you're so intelligent like you're so smart and you're so mm-hmm. cute and you know and then I started pulling up pictures of other like child actresses that she looks up to like that wear glasses yeah like you know the little girl from Matilda um I think her name's Lavender Matilda's best friend Lavender she wears glasses and I pulled up a picture of her and I said look she loved they love Matilda I'm like look Lavender wears glasses so Jojo Siwa wears glasses I was pulling out all these people just to make her feel you know confident in 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 you know because I, I I personally don't wear glasses, so I couldn't say, you know, mummy wears glasses. Like, I couldn't do all of that stuff. But I was pulling up, you know, pictures of, like, in, you know, child actresses that, or, or people that she knows and fam- mm-hmm. even family members, mentioning fam- certain family members mm-hmm. that were for her to feel confident. So my whole thing is I tell them all the time that they're beautiful. I tell them all the time that they're so smart. When they're struggling, and Mel has a, she had a confidence issue. And sometimes it, it does come in and out, like, because she's quite laid back, she's quite introverted, and she does have a confidence thing. But I try, and with the help of her sister, who is, like, full of confidence, full of, you know, we try and get her out of her shell more. And I just say, you know, I mean, like, um, Amel, you're, you're so you're so talented, like you're so creative. Amel's into TikTok at the moment and she loves the, yeah, she really, and she loves doing TikTok dances. And I've noticed that she, that has really brought out her confidence as much as I can't stand hearing the, the songs over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's really brought it out of her where she'll just come to me, she goes, mom, look at this dance. Or, you know, look at this. And she's really excited about it. And, and, and it's not often that I see her get really, really excited about things. So, you know, and even just bringing that into, into school and her teachers trying to get her to say lines in plays and things like that, because she, she really does lack a lot of confidence. She, she, she kind of withdraws. And I think she does that a lot because Am- Amira is so loud. She mm-hmm. thinks her place is to be in the background kind of thing. And it's just like, well, no, you don't necessarily have to be in the background all the time because I know that's where she's comfortable, but I try and tell her, you know, you, you can, you know, be a bit more vocal. You can, you know, come out of your shell more. So I try and encourage her. So for me, encouraging words work. I think what you said is amazing. I might try, I'm, I will definitely do that with the girls. Yeah. Affirmation. Well, yeah, 100%. I'll definitely do that with them. Um, because I, I think that's great, and I'm sure they'd love to like find their own and cut out their own. Mm. That would be like an amazing little 
activity for us to do. But mm. for the mo for the most part, I try and tell them and I rely on them seeing it in me because the kids kids watch you. Kids That's really right. look at their parents and they look at everything. They scrutinize everything. Yes. <laughs> so oh, they scrutinize everything. So if I can be that ref be a reflection of what I want them to you know aspire to and to learn and, and and to be encouraged by and also give them those words of encouragement and to teach them you know how to be amazing people because for me they are amazing they are amazing as they are they're amazing children I want them to stay that way as they grow older I want that to that that to be instilled in them I want that confidence to be instilled in them I don't want anyone to come in and shake things up and, and have that to be faulted in any way so it's just constantly reinforcing those words and you know them seeing it in me that's the only way for me to like yeah teach them and encourage them that's really good. That's so, that's so good. So last week we were talking about the topic racism. I wanted to find out what are the things that you do to talk to your children about um, race and racial um, injustice. That's a really that's a really good question. Um, with everything that's been going on now, I feel like they ask more que they ask me a lot more questions about what's happening, in terms of like what racism is. You know, um, they. You know, why? Why are the police doing that? Why are people hating people because of their? Because one thing they have always known is who they are, what they, where they come from, and I've, I've, I instilled that in them from a very early age. Like they know that they are, you know, black girls of you know Nigerian descent. They know that they're Nigerian first, even though they were born here, and they go to school and they say that. Um, I'll tell you an interesting story. One time they went to, they had, they go to after school club and <laughs> when I went to go pick them up on after school club, one of the um, play workers were like, oh, um, Amira says she's Nigerian, but she's born here. So I told her she was British. I said, well, no. <laughs> Like, yeah, no, I told you, no, she's British. She, isn't it Amira? You're British. And Amira was like, no, I'm Nigerian. I'm Nigerian. I was like, yeah. That's, That's like she, right. she is. Yeah, she is Nigerian. You can't say that she's not. Like, you can't. Yeah, she's born here, but no one's gonna. If if she goes out in the street and someone asks her where she's from, or you know, when you get those type of people that will be like, oh, but, but where are you from, though? Mm. The first thing she's gonna say is Nigerian. Like, she's not gonna say she's British. And if she says she's British, that still that person's still gonna ask the follow up question. Oh, but where are you really from? That's you right. know what I mean? Yeah. So. It's all good and well. Yeah, she's British, okay, by passport and by where she's born, but descendants are That's Nigerian. A, yeah. So for me, like, we, you know, I, I, I talked about race with them and it was more or less that very, very top level. So it was just more or less of, in terms of race, racial identity and who they were. And, you know, they're only six. So from an early age, from when they were in nursery, we talked about race. They, like they, they, another story is they went into nursery one time, and Amira was basically differentiating herself and her, and the people in her classmate by their race. So she was saying, "I'm black, you're white, you're a like, do you know that kind of thing?" It was Amira, both of them actually, Amira and Amel. And the the um, nursery nurse, she the nursery teacher, she said to me, "Oh, mum, um, I just wanted to let you know that Amira was." you know, saying that she's black and that um, they're white and, and, and we're trying to encourage that everyone is the same. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't, I understand that, okay, they're, they're really young, they're in nursery with their kids, they don't fully, like, I get what you're trying to do, your intentions that everyone is the same, but the reality is, yes, what she said is correct, like, she is black, that person, it wasn't a race trope, it wasn't like her being, you know, prejudiced or anything like that, she was just, saying it in terms of like observation what she can see yeah what you can see and I'm not going to undo that and make her not see that she's black and you know that person is of a different race and that person's of a different race because we can't pretend that we're not seeing race that's right At young people can't pretend that you're not seeing race it doesn't make sense because as they get older they won't understand it so from so as I said from very young they understood racial identity and what they are however as far as like um the injustice of it it didn't really like hit home that I hadn't had that conversation with them until everything that's happened 
could happen, like with, you know, the George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter movement and it being so open out there. So, and I was just thinking, wow, I, I actually haven't. But then at what age do you really talk to your kids about racism, really? Like in a, in a you know, in an obvious way. Obviously you say things like, you know, certain people won't like you because X, Y, and Z. They understand not being liked for whatever reason, but how do you explain to your, how do you explain, you know, to your five, six year old that someone might not like you just because you're of a different color? You know, how do you explain that you're black, so someone may not like you just because you're black. It's got nothing to do with, you know, how you are. If it's got nothing to do with not you share your toys, it's got nothing to do with how you talk to them. They're just not going to like you because you're black. So we've never, we hadn't had that conversation up until very recently. And, you know, the girls will come up to me and they'll be like, why, you know, why is that happening? Why are they, you know, why are they police killing black people? That's basically what they said. Why are they, why are police killing black people? And I sat them down and I explained like exactly what racial, as much as I could to a six year old, what racial injustice meant and what Black Lives Matter meant because they were very, very intrigued with this whole black, because they follow social media, <laughs> you know, thanks to TikTok, great. Thanks to TikTok and like my Instagram and stuff. So, and YouTube, they love watching YouTube. So they follow, you know, they see what's going on in social media and they're quite bright girls, so they get it. And, you know, they were asking the relevant questions. And I would say, yes, it's true. There are some police out there that are bad and they are killing people. They are killing black people because, you know, they're threatened by that person's color. And it's not necessarily because that person is bad or they shouldn't, you know, they shouldn't be killing people anyway. And then I said that, yeah, there's, you know, some people out there that are racist and they'll ask what's a racist what's racism and I had to give them the definition of what racism is very very layman's terms for a six-year-old to understand and then we've got this you know we've got loads of books we've got this book um it's oh was it it's about Maya Angelou and I can't remember off the head what the who the author is but it's it's a um children's book and it's about Maya Angelou in the book you know her it goes about it talks about her life and one of the things that she deals with is racial injustice and they read the book so many times with me but then one time when I read the book um for a bedtime story they pointed out they oh that's that's they were being racist that's racism and they got it and I was just like oh my goodness you get it you act like you 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 understand it from top level but you understand Mm -hmm. so from now on it's just just for them to be made for them to make aware of it for themselves, not for me to point it out for them. Um, and, you know, Amira one day took my phone and she, you know, videoed herself because they like to do that. They like to take my phone and take pictures of themselves and do videos of themselves. And she did a video of herself, and, I was, and it's on my Instagram. She did a video of herself talking about um, racism. and she And she talked about how people shouldn't, judge people this is what she said people shouldn't judge people based on their color people shouldn't hate it's so oh no and I saw the video on my phone and I put and I was just like and the video is so grubby like it's greasy from where she's put her hand all over the camera like <laughs> and I'm <laughs> and I'm just like nah I need to post this because who, who, who are you like what how did you why would you like I, I was wow. so taken back and I'm just like wow like I'm gonna I'm gonna post this because now you can see that our children are seeing things and yes. hearing things. Mm. Yeah, and for those parents that may not have had that conversation, now is maybe the time to have those conversations because they are may, they may not be outwardly asking you what's going on and what's happening, but they're seeing it and they may not be understanding it, but they need an explanation. So that's when we as parents have to step in mm. and be like, okay, this is what is going on. It's not good. It's not great. It's been happening for a long time. You may experience it, and that's just the harsh realities. You 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 might just well you will you you will experience it in whatever capacity, whatever level. And I just want you to understand that, despite you your color, despite your heritage, despite your background, you're amazing. You're loved, and that's you right. will and you will excel. Like that's don't right. the police ain't gonna come and get you, girls. Like you, you're fine. To say that, you know, I'll say that. And as far as you will do well, and you you will do well in school, you will do well in life. And the color of your skin is not gonna hold you back 
in any capacity. And, and I'll say, and I pray that over you because you will do amazingly despite any obstacles because I'm a testament to, you know, try, well, trying to do what I can't do my best as, as a black woman, trying to have, you know, have, having my own business, doing the things, being an author, you know, working full time and looking after children, doing all of those kind of things, working in like a, you know, my, my position where I work, like I'm in a director position. Like I, 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 I've achieved so much despite of the obstacles that I should have, that I would have, that I have gone through based on being a black woman. So therefore look at me and you, you guys will do, you, there's no problem. You will do the same, but just know that these things, these obstacles are there. It's just for you to jump them or mm. go under them. Whatever way you want to do it. You want to jump, want to go under, that's fine, but they will be there, but you will get through. You will do good. Like you, will, you, you are, striving for excellence always and that's all I can really you know teach them and I do encourage parents please talk to your kids about racism talk to your kids and not just black parents all parents all parents yeah all parents talk to your kids about racism buy those books there's loads of books out there you know towards children about racism loads there's so many there's so many things there's so now we're so lucky we have so much out there that we can just take from there's youtube there's videos there's there's so much resources out there so much information out there if you struggle as a parent to tell that to, to you know to explain then let the books do the explaining for you or let you know certain podcasts and youtubers do do the explaining for you if you struggle as a parent to do that but yeah but I do encourage have that conversation with your kids doesn't matter if they're really young or they don't get it they will get it it will it will go in somehow and even if it doesn't go all the way in wait until a few more years and they'll come back to you and they'll ask those questions again and you have the conversation again but definitely have the conversation wow you're just so inspiring just listening to you I'm like I'm taking it in no, no, no. <laughs> it all in. but I love the fact that you go out of your way to educate them through books yeah, and good. you being an author now you know is educating and inspiring them um for them to be able to identify themselves in these books that yeah. are being produced and um you're doing such a great job with them oh so we're coming up to the end how do you want your children to remember you I just want them to know that I did my best that's all I mean that I I have everything that I've done everything I do everything that I think everything I breathe everything is for them Mm -hmm. and me but it's it's for them like the the person who I am, the person who I'm trying to be, where I'm trying to be in life is literally for them. Like I want them to see what I am doing and to be encouraged to want to be. Because like, if I'm honest, I'm my mum was the blueprint. Everything I've done is what my mum's done before me. I'm not, like I can't even take all the credit. Like everything, not to get emotional, but everything that I've, that I do for my children and everything that I do is just as a woman and as a, as a mum is what my mum's done before. Like my mum, you know, my mum is me, my sisters and like me and my sister, one of my sisters, like we're very close in age. We're practically people we're 18 months apart. So they think we're twins anyway. So my mum wow. really wanted twins. And my mum was, you know, taking us to like, we were going Disney World, we were going Florida, like we were taking on like extravagant holidays. And yeah, my dad was around, and I was very much around, but it was very much like just us, me, because my dad worked a lot. So it was just very like me and my mum, me, me and my sisters and my mum. And she would take us on holidays. And my mum worked a full-time job. And, you know, we had extracurricular activities as well on top of that. So we'd go to stage school, we'll go swimming, like all, and she managed to do that with a full-time job. So. Wow. I'm like, well, if my mum did that, like, there's no excuse. So just knowing that I watched everything that my mum did and and practically used her as a blueprint, I want my children to use me as a blueprint, same way, to look at me and be like, oh, wow, mum wrote a book. Like, they they rant and rave about it all the time. They're like, my oh, mum is famous, my mum's famous. She's got <laughs> she's got a book, so she's like, all along. So they tell everyone at school, they, they rant and rave about me being famous. Apparently <laughs> I'm famous, I don't know. But, like... Yeah, they're like, my mum's famous. Like, so I want them to just see what I do for them 
and just what I'm doing for myself and most, most importantly what I'm doing for myself and feel like well if my mum can do that with everything that's going on around her and with all the obstacles that have been put in front of her then I, I could do that too wow I can, I can literally just do that and do better even better than me that's what I'd love I'd love them to even do better but just to look at me and just be encouraged that's like and to remember that everything I've done is is essentially for them yeah you're amazing wow 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 thank you but you said that you are going to release your new book soon um can we get the name please and what dates is that going to be released Yes, so the new book is That's My New Friend and it's going to be out next month. It is about, obviously we carry on with the um, the twin ventures as I call it, adventure, twin adventure, you know, play on words. And they go on to start big school. And now with school, it's a new environment, which means new social dynamics, relationships that they have to now navigate through, making new friends that kind of thing and I wanted to release it next month so that it was out in time for when the kids god willing what's going on go back to school so okay. wow yeah, so it'll be a nice little starter book for kids that are starting school because it gets a it's it's a very scary thing for children to start yeah. big school yeah very my little girl scary. starts next September as well this September really? yeah so oh. I'll we'll definitely be getting that book Please, yeah, get the book. It's so, yeah, get the book because it's something that I'm sure all children will be able to relate yeah. to. Because that daunting, ex- that daunting feeling that you, you it, it's all throughout that whole, it's all throughout the book. I'm telling you, and making new friends, just that whole, oh, am I going to be able to make new friends? And what's yeah, that's all in there. So, uh, yeah, that'll be out next month. And how can we access that book? Um, it's going to be on Amazon, um, and Barnes and Noble, and. Also, you can get it on the website. The website is Twin Ventures, Twin V E N T U R E S dot co dot uk, and you can get the book from there. And also, on that website, it's just going to have like information about us, um, about the girls. Um, the other book will be on there too. Um, yeah, and also like on our Instagram, the dot Twin Ventures, you can purchase the new book there. And how can people contact you? You can contact us by email at the.twinventures, T-W-I-N-V-E-N-T-U-R-E-S at gmail.com. Um, on our Instagram, the.twinventures. Also, um, my personal Instagram is at M-S Lola, L-O-L-A-X-X. And obviously the website, thetwinventures.co.uk. And our Facebook account is She's My Twin Sister. <laughs> if you guys are she, She's My Twin Sister, um, we've got our Facebook um, like page. Uh, yeah, and then you can find me on Facebook, Lola Adibaya. You'll, you'll see my pictures in there. But yeah, I'd, I'd say the best bet is to find us on the book page, which will be She's My Twin Sister um, Facebook. Thank you for listening. I hope that you were encouraged. Please do share this with your friends or family and do come back for next week's episode. Bye for now.